Charles says it has successfully been using machine learning to help it collect revenue. Machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. It's when computer algorithms automatically improve with time and experience as they process more data. Toby Shapshank is our guy when it comes to tough te tech topics. Uh, so uh, let's get him to explain. D did I get that explanation right, Toby, before I mislead the people? No, you got it. You got it right. And let's just quickly... Let's just quickly unpack the phrase artificial intelligence. It's a little too soon to call computers intelligent. Um, it's a little too soon to call spokespeople for certain foundations the same thing, but I won't go any further. Um, so, so what we have at the moment are very sophisticated computers that run algorithms, and these algorithms are able to work out certain things, much like Facebook's algorithm knows how to put people you like pictures more often in your newsfeed. Algorithms are starting to run the world, and I think it's fantastic that SARS has worked out how to use the available data in the world to collect more money. And in this instance, what they're doing is called machine learning. AI isn't AI yet. It's really called machine learning. All of it is really machine learning, and that's computers or algorithms algorithms learning how to be better at what they do. And, and the amazing thing is that these algorithms, in many ways, can self-teach themselves, as it were. The more they work, the more they learn, the more data they get, the more they enhance what they're doing. So what SARS is doing is taking publicly available information, or, or not necessarily publicly, but available information from tax authorities in other parts of the world, or um, uh, 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 directories that store things like share, if you own shares, or if you own property, or if you own other assets. And they're tapping into these databases from what I understand in other parts of the world and using those to work out uh, if people are declaring all of their overseas assets. So it's unlikely to be me and you, but certainly some very rich people and some people that may have been caught in those nine wasted years or been participating in those nine wasted years might have tried to hide assets offshore. Um, and of course, financial assets have to be registered with whatever financial authority in whichever territory and that's what SARS is using. It's using that information to tap into uh, what's out there and work out if people are lying or hiding stuff when they do their, their tax returns. And, and from, from the initial results that SARS is talking about, it looks like they've done a very good job. It's mostly very rich people who are who can afford the lawyers and accountants and other firms that let them, you know, hide their money around the world. And we've had lots of exposés of this in the last few years. So the super rich are able to use these facilities to, to do things. ProPublica in America has run an enormously controversial series about how the very rich in the world, including our own Elon Musk, have managed to pay very little taxes. Yeah because they've used the financial systems to their benefit. So, so well done to SARS, well done to Edward Kiersvetter for understanding that this is the way to find all of those loopholes. Um, yeah. And, uh, and this, is, this is the future, isn't it? It's not just, uh, you know, someone looking at a tax return and saying, did you tell me everything? They're going to tap into the, you know, the databases of, of European stock exchanges or property values or whatever, and they will do... Um, they will do an analysis of that and and be able to use that information. So it's fantastic to see this kind of modernization, yeah. as it were, of of the system. You know that that people are that 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 our receiver of revenue is working out how to um, how to use what's available. And Toby, it's, it's fascinating because I, I had a conversation a few years ago. Uh, with someone who worked at SARS who just wanted to, they just wanted to work out what people declared when they left England. Say, so if you leave England and you, or Europe and you've bought tax free stuff, they just wanted to work out what people declare when they leave another country and come back to South Africa. That just, just that basic information. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that, that we always have to ask. Uh, or, or, or tax authorities have to be like this, but unfortunately, people and are, are sometimes de devious. Toby, uh, Toby, I've, I've only got about 30 seconds uh, left with you. Uh, very, very quickly, what are the limitations, though, of machine learning? And how could that influence what SARS is doing? Well, uh, it's early days, really. I mean, they, they're tapping into available technology. In five or ten years, this technology will be much more efficient. Also, the, the longer the algorithm runs, the more the algorithm learns. 
So, so SARS is getting in at the right time of the wave. It's not, you know, early days where no one knows exactly what it could do. There are some test cases. There are other countries that, that clearly have done something similar. So, so good for SARS, and it's just going to get better and better. And, the, you know, the people who skip out on paying taxes are, are going to get a call from Edward Kierswater. Well, uh, they, they're definitely not going to be calling me. They're not going to find any no. offshore data on Tapuma Makina, that's for sure. All right, thanks, Toby. We appreciate it. Toby Shapshank of Stuff Magazine explain, explaining the work that SARS is doing using machine learning to catch those uh, that are trying their very best to not pay their taxes. Now,